The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can. I'm caught in the grips and I can't shake free. I thought I could control it. Now it's controlling me. Your freedom starts with you forgiving you because God has already thrown it in the ocean blue. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And that's Matthew 5 and 6. Hello, you've tuned into Poet Ministry Presents, and I'm Yvette Wilburn, your hostess, and I greet you in Christian love. Poet Ministries is a Christian writing ministry that puts out eternal truths through poetry. And these poems are deeply rooted in the Word of God. Let's open up with a word of prayer. Father, in the name of Jesus, we just come to you humbly as we know how, praising you because you're worthy to be praised. Lifting you up and magnifying your name because you're worthy. We ask that you cover us in the blood of Jesus. Forgive us for our sins and to continue to strengthen our hands to do the work that you put before us. We ask that you bless our loved ones, our family, and our friends, and even our enemies. Lord, we ask that you just keep on blessing us and keep on keeping us and keep on doing what it is that you do. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. Falling in love with Jesus. It's the best thing I've ever, ever done. In his arms, I feel protected. In his arms, never disconnected. In his arms, I feel connected. There's no place I'd ra rather be Falling in love With Jesus Falling in love With Jesus Falling in love with Jesus is the best thing I've ever, ever done. Yes, falling in love. Falling in love. With Jesus. Falling in love. With Jesus. Jesus, falling in love with Jesus was the best thing I've ever done. Hallelujah. Jesus. I'm going to um, read Second Samuel 23. 20 and 21. And Benaniah, the son of Jehoda, the son of a valiant man of Kabzeel, who had done many acts, he slew two lion like men of Moab. He went down also and slew a lion in the midst of a pit in the time of snow. And he slew an Egyptian, a goodly man. And the Egyptian had a spear in his hand. But he went down to him with a staff. 
and plucked the spear out of the Egyptian's hand and slew him with his own spear. These things did ben Beniah, the son of Jehoda, and had his name among three mighty men. He was more honorable than thirty, but he attained not the first three, but David set him over his guard. I've read you Second Samuel twenty three twenty to twenty three. So he was a mighty man of valor. And th this is interesting that I took these notes when I went to see Kwame Kilpatrick at World Changers. I'm not sure when. But um it it was before he got went to prison. And the notes that I took was don't abort your gift because you made a mistake. Optimum conditions. Punch the lion and make him mad. You got you can't just punch him. You got to kill it. And say what is your lion? Face it and kill it now. What are you expecting? So I'm thinking what is my lion? Procrastination is my lion. So I have to punch it and kill it. And how do you punch and kill procrastination? Don't do it. Stop putting off till tomorrow what you can do today. How many times have I done that? I say, oh, I'm going to pray. Most of the time when people say, pray for me, I say, oh, I'm going to pray for you. And then I, I don't because I forget about it. So now I've started... If they say pray, I pray right then and there. So then I won't have to try to remember it later or do it later because I've already done it right when you ask. Um, I'm going to pray now for my sister. She's in the hospital. She's having internal bleeding. And her name is Robbie. And I just want to say, God, please dry up the blood. Help her to heal and to come home. In Jesus' name we pray. So, also it says here, You will gain the courage to fight lions. Get free from people. And you're robbing God of his glory by not chasing your lions. Because the Bible says that... Um, about the words of our testimony and the blood of the lamb and uh, let's see where is that at? blood of the testimony um, blood of the lamb blood of the lamb and the word of our testimony and that's in revelation 12 11 and it says i know the revelation is the last book okay well, i'm not in the last part revelation 12 11. That's 12. And here's 11. And they overcome him. And they overcame him. By the blood of the lamb. And by the word of their testimony. And they loved not their lives. Unto death. And he's talking about Satan. We overcome him. By the blood of the lamb. And the word of their testimony. So if you don't do it then you don't have a word of test you don't have a testimony you only can testify after you've done it you only can do it after you've trusted God to help you to do it and so it says do what is necessary 
I got all of these notes. Man, you have to guard your spirit too. Keep your heart. You know, they say purge me. Cleanse me with his sap so that I might be whiter than snow. Purge me, Jesus. Let's see. I'm going to look at 2 Corinthians and see what they, they're saying about this. 2 Corinthians 13 5 says, Examine yourselves. Whether you be in the faith, prove your own selves. Know ye not your own selves? How that Jesus Christ is in you, except ye be retrobates. But I trust that we should know that we are not retrobates. Reprobates. Mm. Now I pray to you, God, that you do not do no evil, not that we should appear approved, but that ye should do that which is honest. So we be as rep reprobates. So that was guarding your spirit and keeping your heart, asking God to cleanse us. Let's see what does Proverbs 11 say. The wicked worketh of deceitful work, but to him that saw righteousness shall be a sure reward. So keep keep your heart. Psalms 51 and 7. I know I think I know where that's at. 51 Purge me, Lord. And I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Create, and 10 says, Create in me a clean heart, O Lord, and renew a right spirit within me. Cast me not away from your presence, and take not thy Holy Spirit from me. Restore unto me the joy of my salvation, and uphold me with thy free spirit so I got a poem called guard our house Lord please guard our house hear us as we ask keep us as we toil and spin and do our daily tasks guard our children and loved ones please keep them safe from harm Watch and protect us as we lean on your everlasting arms. Help us to remain steady and on course while we continually take the violent by force. Lead us by your word and your mighty spirit so when we face calamity and despair, we'll be careful not to fear it. Adhere to our prayers with your loving grace. Help us to remember to always seek your face. As we read the Bible with diligence and care, we'll be ever, ever mindful to rely on your word and wonderful promises found there. We love you and adore you. We will give God the glory that we know is surely due. Help us not to stray away and always depend on you. Please guard our house, Lord. Please guard our house, O oh Lord, and all who pass through our door, and we will trust and believe in you now and forevermore. Hallelujah. Guard our house. That was in, um, inspired from uh, Genesis 1. Let's see. Got our house. 
Lord, and those who enter in. Yeah. It was It's in Genesis one what he said to uh, Yeah. I'm sorry, I, I didn't find it yet. But anyway, it, it still tells Adam to guard his house. So, we talked about the matters of the heart, keeping your heart. What about distractions? Yes. That I wrote this. Wow. Um, excellency, power, majesty. Cool-headed, quiet. That's Proverbs, let's see, 1727. 17. 17. 27. He that hath knowledge, spare his words, and a man of understanding is of an excellent spirit. Wow. Say even a fool. When he holdeth his peace. Is counted wise. And he that sheds his lips. Is esteemed a man of understanding. That means you can't talk about. Everything. It said. I, I, I heard this. It is. Better to be. To be silent. And thought a fool. Than to open your mouth and remove all doubt. So. You can rise above all of your circumstances. You know. Sometimes we feel like. Man. How am I ever going to get out of this? How am I ever going to stop doing this? It's going to be through God. Through, through God. You, you might say, well, I can stop drinking anytime I want to, you know. I just, it's not, I haven't reached bottom yet. It's, it haven't, I haven't lost anything. And you are the ultimate decider of what's enough and what's not enough. But... You're losing your reputation. You're losing the trust of others. You're losing hope. So you are losing something. You know, I, I know people right now today who who drink entirely too much. And for me, but who, who am I? I drank entirely too much for my family members as well. And they would make little suggestions or say what they needed to say. But I, I didn't feel like, I felt like they didn't know me. They didn't know all that I was going through, what I needed to get started on the day. But what I needed was Jesus, you know. And, and they, they didn't say you need Jesus they said you need to stop you need to stop this and my bottom wasn't that that was my bottom my bottom was when they said they were going to take my children and I was like oh no no, no. can't take my kids so I decided I was going to stop but I was only going to stop for a little while just until they got off my back but then that's when I met Jesus, and I was able to stop for good. This year, I will celebrate 33 years of clean time. No drinking, no smoking weed, no crack, nothing. So, 
I understand what what people are going through when they say I haven't reached bottom. And all I can do is just tell them my story. You know, this is a time of year too that a lot of people are mourning the loss of their loved ones and uh, little things bring back to memory. Um, I know for my granddaughter, if I'm riding down the street or at a gas station where I picked her up at or dropped her off at or whatever, I think about her. I have a revolving picture frame that just about every other picture is a picture of her. But she's smiling and we're smiling and we're having a good time. So now I'm able to think about the good times. Um, now I'm able to think about the good times. You know, um, we had some bad times too. But um, I don't harp on the bad times. You know, I think that um, God is in charge and he knows what he's doing. And just because I don't know or why he did what he, what's happened, I don't, that's not my place to question, you know, because I trust him and I, I've trusted him this far. I have to trust him in this too. You know, so I'm just praying for the hearts of the people who are heavy, who have heavy hearts today, you know, and ask that God would comfort you and that give you peace, you know, so that you can keep on moving and keep on doing what it is that he put you here to do. If you're still here, you got a purpose. The people who are gone on, I, I don't know. Um, I would say that their purpose has been met or that it's uh, for us to pick up and follow. Because we hear from God. We hear, you know, we hear from Him. You know, and so, but sometimes... The things that we hear, we don't want to hear. We say, "Oh no, no, that's that can't. That's the devil. That can't be God." You know, but he knows. He knows our beginning and our end. He, you know, in Psalms one thirty-eight. I like this. Not one thirty-eight. One thirty-nine. And he says, "Wow, let me see. Um, is it?" Here it is, 139.16. Thine eyes did see my substance, yet being unperfect, and in thy book all my members were written, which in continuance were fashioned, when as yet there was none of them. I, I like that, because to me that means that he knew about all of my days before I had even lived any of them. So he knew what was going to happen with Brandy. He knew what was going to happen with me. He knew what was going to happen with you. And he, he knows. And he knows um, Jeremiah 29 and 11. Dang, let's see. Man, my stomach is brown. I was supposed to eat some soup. Um, before I came here and uh wait a minute lamentation and lamentation wait a minute Jeremiah there it is Jeremiah lamentation 29 Jeremiah 29 11. For I know the thoughts that I think toward you, saith the Lord. The thoughts of peace and not of evil to give you an expected end. 
He said, then you shall call upon me, and you shall go and pray unto me, and I will hearken to you. So what does hearken mean? Listen, attend to, give you what you need. That That's it. Um, man, I got all of these pages. This was a little notebook, and I think my grandson tore the front off of it. I still got the back to it, but not the front. Okay, it says preaching in season and out season. Um, and they shall turn away their ears from the truth and be, shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things. Endure afflictions. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. And that was do the work. That's the part right there. Do the work. Let's see. I'm looking for Second Timothy. This first. Second Timothy. Four and four. Preach the word, be instant in season and out of season. Reprove, rebuke, rebuke, exhort with all long suffering and doctrine. For the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine, but after their own lust, they shall. Heap to themselves teachers having itch itching ears, and it shall and they shall turn away their ears from the truth, and they sh and shall be turned unto fables. But watch thou in all things, endure afflictions, do the work of an evangelist, make full proof of thy ministry. Do the work of an evangelist. Make full proof of thy ministry. So how do you make full proof of thy ministry? By believing, saying what you believe, and doing what you believe God said for you to do. That a lot of things, we don't feel like we got the power. Because we're going by our own, excuse me, my own track record. But we never, anything that really, that we accomplished that was really big, it was done because God did it. You know, he, he put the ideal in our mind, it became a desire of our heart, and he gave you the power. You couldn't do it by yourself. Just like I was telling you about being clean for 33 years. I didn't do that by myself. I, um, and sometimes the way the ideal gets in your mind is it could be through courts. It could be through um, protective services. Who knows? But it is all for my good. You know, it was all for my good. So, I have to just know that I trust him and that what he, he knows what's best for me. He says, I have fought the good fight. I have finished my course. I have kept the faith. So, that was Paul talking. And... How can you, uh, he said he finished his course. Are, are we even on course? I'm like, okay, our pastor talked about uh, what was in our house. And our uh, children, our youth, um, preached about it and learned about it. And I, and I still got the same things in my house that I had, plus a few more, 
and I have all in, uh, the ingredients it's just that I, I don't even understand why I haven't pushed forward on this but I'm asking for you all to pray with me or for me that I will be finished with procrastination and that I will declutter my mind and my house and that I will trust God more than I've ever trusted him before you know because I've trusted him for many things and many things I have been able to accomplish you know by trusting him you know I, I really have it, and it's, it's just so hard for me to, to fathom that I trusted him for really, really big things. And I've trusted him for small things. But something that's like every day, I, I have a problem with that. Um, when people say, oh yeah, you, you can do it. And I'm like, yeah, I know. And I, and I wonder, is it because I have trusted him for big things, am I taking him for granted? And I, am I just saying, well, I know that when I'm ready, he's going to do it. That's the wrong attitude, you know? I, that's that's playing games, you know, and I and I'm asking God to help me to stop playing games. Here's a poem I wrote called um, "I Trust God." Today I feel like I'm in a tunnel, and I don't see the marvelous light. As I stare into this darkness. I wonder if it'll ever be all right. I won't say I'm happy, yet I'll say I'm not sad. I don't feel good, and I don't feel bad. I'm filled with things to do. My mind is such a clutter. When will I begin or end is all I manage to mutter. I need to manage my money and my time as well, just as well. This would release me from my self-imposed hell. I understand that things take time, and time takes time too. If I take the time to put things in order, I'd be amazed at what I could do. Careful planning is crucial, and preparation is a must. I'll turn my life over to God. In Him, I'll put my trust. I can do all things through Christ, who strengthens me. And to all that will listen, I will surely tell, I can depend on God and know that all is well. Yeah, all is well. <laughs> wow. Once I depend on him, and, and that means lean on him, leave the results to him. I could have all kind of ideals, but the results have to be in the hand of the master. And that is God. So, let's see. No longer bound. Yes, I'm free. I have the love of Jesus in my heart. I'm walking in my liberty. Hmm. Yes, that is a new poem that's in the, the making. Um, let's see. I, I brought this book. Beth Moore, Praying God's Word, Breaking Free from Spiritual Strongholds. Beth Moore is a writer and teacher of best-selling books and Bible studies. She's been all over the uh, United States. I was going to say the world. But it's Praying God's Word. And I was going to 
talk about overcoming unbelief. Let's see. Okay. The bad. I pray also that the eyes of your heart may be enlightened in order that you may know the hope to which he has called you. The riches of his glorious inheritance is in the saints and his in incomparably great power for us who believe. The power is the working of his mighty strength which he exerted in Christ when he raised him from the dead. Please accept these truths. He he gives us incom incomparably great power, more than enough to break the yoke of any bondage. But I believe uh, unclogs the pipes and invites his power to flow. So, what unbelief is clogging my pipes for his spirit to flow? It could be stubbornness, rebellious, and this rebellion is as witchcraft. So, I hope it's not that disobedience or what? What what's clogging you up that? You can't do what it is that God asks you to do. Because I always put it off. I say, oh yeah, when I get home today, I'm going to work on my book. You know, then when I get home today, something is going on. And I forgot all about the book. And I say, oh yeah, well, I'm going to the library on Sunday. But that today is Friday. So, what what good is that? That's putting it off two more days. And then that, that I'm clogged up, love, y'all. Yeah. Pray, pray for me. I am clogging myself up with procrastination. And um, I, I got all of these things, all of these books, directions, everything. And yet, I still just say, like I got time. You know, I, I understand that things take time, but I need to put in the time, do the work. That's what I need, and I need to pray. And then say pray means pray until something happens. And do we ever pray until something happens, or we just say one or two prayers and then get back into our doubtful negative thinking you know I, I realized one day that I, I'd say I don't want to be a down brown negativity but I realized that some of the things that I say are negative and so I've been asking God to show me when when I'm being negative or when when can I um, uh, what can I say differently how can I react to something differently you know um, um, I got a, a poem that's called I'm still standing. Hmm. I'm still standing. And I know that it's not on my own. Jesus is with me. He never leaves me alone. I'm still standing. Even though I need constant prayer, God says I won't forsake you. On me you can cast each and every care. I'm still standing on the promises that my Father has made to me. Standing steadfast has led to my victory. The word states that I am the head and not the tail, 
with Jesus as my rock, I can't fail. I'm still standing without fear or doubt, without doubt or fear, despite all my trials and tests. I'm still here. I'm still here, y'all. Genesis, Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy. Okay, let's see. Deuteronomy. 28. <clears throat> Deuteronomy. Joshua. Joshua. Here we go. Deuteronomy said, I was looking for uh, you are the head and not the tail. But this is blessed in the field and blessed in the city. So, but Deuteronomy 28.12 says, The Lord shall open unto thee his good treasure, the heaven to give the rain unto thy land in his season, in his season, and to bless all the work of thine hand, and thou shalt lend unto many nations, and thou shalt not borrow. borrow. Here it is. And the Lord shall make thee the head, and not the tail. And thou shalt be above only, and thou shalt not be beneath. If that thou hearken unto the commandments of thy Lord, which I command to thee this day, to observe them, and to do them. The head and not the tail. That's awesome. That's the awesome. That's the promise of God. That he is making the head and not the tail. Wow. Yes, Lord. Hallelujah. But back to this book. It has different things that our strongholds. One of them is unforgiveness. You know, and it says now you should um, for unforgiveness you, you add names in it. I pray for so and so that she will trust in you with all their heart. And lean not into their own understanding. And that you would make their paths straight. I pray that so-and-so will be patient and not quick-tempered. And then he gives you the scriptures where it's coming from. And um, it gives you a lot of scriptures that you can pray. For unforgiveness. I'm going to read a couple of them now. Um, let's see. Psalms. 5 and 2. Psalms 5 and 2. Psalms 5 and 2. Here it is. Psalms 5 and 12 of me. For thy, thou, Lord, will bless the righteous with favor, and will thou compass him as with a shield. Yeah, I'm, you know what I'm going to read? I feel that this is a time to read this. He, Psalms 91. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. 
I will say of the Lord, He is my refuge and my fortress. My God in Him will I trust. Surely He shall deliver thee from the snare of the fowler. And from the noisome pestilence. Surely he shall deliver thee from this. No. He shall cover thee with thy feathers. With his feathers. And under his wings. Shalt thou trust. His truth shall be thy shield and buckler. Thou shalt not be afraid. For the terror by night. Nor for the arrow that flieth by day. Nor for the pestilence that walks in darkness. Nor for the destruction that wasted at noonday. A thousand shall fall at thy side. And ten thousand at thy right hand. But it shall not come nigh thee. Only with thine eyes shall thou behold. And see the reward of the wicked. Because thou hast made the Lord. Which is my refuge. Even the most high thy habitation. There shall no evil befall thee, neither shall any plague come nigh thy dwelling. For he shall give his angels charge over thee to keep thee in all thy ways. They shall bear thee up in their hands, lest thou dash thy foot against a stone. Thou shalt tread upon the lion and the adder, the young lion and the dragon shall thou trample trample under feet because he hath set his love upon me therefore will I deliver him I will set him on high because he hath known my name he shall call upon me and I will answer him I will be with him in trouble I will deliver him and honor him with long life will I satisfy him and shew him my salvation. Amen. That is Psalms I'm going to read Psalms 23. That was Psalms 91. The Lord is my shepherd I shall not want. Excuse me. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures he leadeth me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemy. Thou anointest my head with oil. My cup runneth holy, over. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Mm. The Lord is, this is Psalms 27. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? The Lord is the strength of my life. Whom shall I be afraid? I'm going to read 64. Hear my voice, O oh God, in my prayer, preserve me, preserve my life from the fear of the enemy. Hide me from the secret counsel of the wicked, from the insurrection of the workers of iniquity, who wet their tongues like a sword and bend their bows to shoot their arrows, even bitter words, that they may shoot in secret at the perfect Suddenly do they shoot at him and fear not. Hallelujah. That is. I'm going to go back to about the house. What do you have in the house? Um, I have a computer, a printer, picture frame, poems, books, ideals. Use what you have to get what you need. God will provide. He adds the increase supernaturally. Go Shut yourself in and hear from the Lord. And not only hear from him, do it. Don't just be hearers of the word. 
be doers of the word. Obey, you only can go as far as your faith takes you. The oil stopped when the jars and the pots ran out. The woman had enough to become debt free and live. She had little, but through obedience, ob obedience, she gained much. This is Psalm 66. Oh, yeah, there it is. In 12. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through the fire and through the water, but thou brought us out into a wealthy place. Come to see. Come see the works of the Lord. He is terrible. In doing make make ye make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye land, sing forth the honor of his name, make his praise glorious. Say unto God, How terrible art thou in thy works through the greatness of thy power, shall thine enemies submit themselves unto thee. Yes. Hmm. A wealthy place. Come and hear all ye that fear God, and that I will declare what he has done for my soul. This is Psalm 66, 16 through 19 through 20. But verily God hath, you see, come and hear all ye that fear God. And I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verify, God hath heard me. I mean, I'm saying, but verily, God hath heard me. He hath attempted, attended to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer nor his mercy from me that will uh, mostly all of psalms 66 you can read it all in your entire in its entirety it's it's a blessing i was going to read 64 but it's 61 hear my cry oh god attend to my prayer from the end of the earth will I cry unto thee. When my heart is overwhelmed, lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me and a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide in the tabernacle, in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covert of thy wings. Selah. So in there it's saying, hear my cry, God. Answer my prayer. You've always done it. I know that you can. And I know that you will. And I'm trusting. That everything will work out. According to your will. Because no matter what. God's will will be done. He's going to get the glory. Anyway. Anyhow. So. I'm just saying. Lord, help us to do what it is that you have put in our hearts to do, to follow your will. We were talking in, in church about um, the Holy Spirit and about him being a comforter and bringing things to your remembrance and that the Holy Spirit is a gift that Jesus promised that he would send when he went when he transfigured to heaven. And so, we just say, Lord, I know sometimes we do things and we say, man, if I had listened to my first mind, I wouldn't be in this trouble. Well, the first mind is the Holy Spirit. And it's not something that told you. To, it was God speaking to you through the Holy Spirit. But we try to debate. We listen. We say, nah, 
I'm not going to do that. We make a conscious decision not to do it. And then say, oh man, if I had listened. Yeah, because it wasn't like, oh man, if God had told me. Because he has. He said it to you. He's told you something today that you're supposed to do. And you trying to figure a way out of it. Trying to trick him into thinking that you didn't understand it. And or the big one is, oh, that was the devil. Because I know. But see, God, he works in mysterious ways. And what we think he might be thinking could be totally out, out in left field. His thoughts are higher than our thoughts. His ways are higher than our way. So we can't even imagine. And because he knows the beginning and the end, we can't even compete with that. You know, it's just like a puzzle. We can see the small one, two pieces, but he sees the completed puzzle. That's um, uh, going up the stairs steps. You only can see the steps that you on in the next few steps. But you see the whole staircase. You know, so we have to trust God. You know, even when it seems irrational. Even when it don't make any sense. We have to still trust that he's gotten us out of things before. That we got our own selves into. A lot of the things that God's has cleared me from, I got my own self into it. Maybe, well, selfishness, greed, lust, whatever. But I got it into to it my own self, and he got it out. He got me out. You know, um, I was talking earlier about lions, and which lions are you facing? In, in, in Daniel, God, shut up the lion's, lion's mouth so that they could not eat him or harm him. He will shut the lion's mouth for us too. We won't be um, in, in, engulfed by, by pain, depression. I'm trusting God to heal my kidneys, you know, I I uh, did all of the things to get a, a um, on a list for a transplant, but I I I want him to heal my kidneys, you know, and that's that's big because people say that that can't be done. They say you're gonna be on dialysis for the rest of your life or you're going to need it for the rest of your life. or But I'm just putting my hope and my trust in God like I did. And like it was done for me when I uh, was hospitalized with COVID. We, we prayed. I prayed for myself while I was in the hospital. Sometimes I only could say the Lord is my shepherd. I commit myself to you, Lord. You know, and then, and then that was it. But that was enough because here, two years later, I'm good as new. Well, we've come to the end of our show. I'm going to close out with the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, which art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil for thine is the kingdom the power and the glory forever and ever amen you can reach me at ydlavender at yahoo um, www.poetministries.com and my phone number is 313-850-3004. And remember, relax. God's in charge. The Lord is my light and my salvation. Whom shall I fear? 
God, grant me the serenity to accept the things I cannot change, the courage to change the things that I can. I'm caught in the grips and I can't shake free. I thought I could control it. Now it's controlling me. Your freedom starts with you forgiving you because God has already thrown it in the ocean blue. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father in heaven. And that's Matthew 5 and 6. Grace and peace, family. This is Bishop Marvin Sapp, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. What's up, everybody? This is your girl, Vicky Winans, and you're watching Bell Global Network. My name is Mike Duggan, and I'm watching the Bell Global Network. Hey, keep it locked. It's your boy, D. Hattie, watching the Bell Global Network. You know how it is. It Hi, I'm Charlie Langton, and you're watching the Bell Global Network. Hi, this is Martha Reeves, and you're watching Bell Global Network.